Hey guys, who are you? In this video, I'm gonna show you my life in Uzbekistan and I'm gonna interview some Americans who came here for a short stay and also an Uzbek guy who lives in Brooklyn, New York. As you know, Tashkent is the capital of Uzbekistan. It's a large city of 3 million people and I've lived here for a few months now. I start my day by going jogging in the morning. It's morning time, it's 8 in the morning. Normally I start my day by going jogging. You can tell the spring is in town because everything's becoming so green, so nice. And uh, I almost feel like it's April time or May time and back in Russia. So totally enjoying it. Look at this car. It's a pretty nice neighborhood. There's a lot of hotels. There's a lot of hostels because tourism is on the rise in Uzbekistan. And there's also a lot of kindergartens with a focus on English and math. And you know, I think it's, uh, Uzbekistan is a pretty good place to raise your kids because it's really safe and pretty friendly, you know. This winter in Uzbekistan, especially in Tashkent, was a nightmare for the locals because it was as harsh as a Russian one. And you know, all the local plants, they're not really used to this kind of cold. See, these magnolia trees really suffered from the harsh winter. I don't know if they're gonna survive. Normally I do two rounds around the neighborhood which takes me about 25 minutes. In this neighborhood, you'll find a lot of Korean and Chinese places. One thing I wanna complain about is that there are too many cars and there's not really a designated path for pedestrians. So a lot of times you gotta like look around and see a surrounding to make sure you don't get run over. Black cat on a black car. <laughs> All right, enough talk and let's go jogging. I got it. Currently, I'm staying at a hotel for $24 a day with breakfast included. For me, it's the most convenient option. Daytime temperatures range from 18 to 26 Celsius. Wonderful. It's a beautiful time of the year and all the trees are blooming. See these magnolia trees? They had a hard time surviving the winter. Hey, okay. look how busy the place is. Many Russians moved to Tashkent recently. We try to stick together and we go to breakfast together. It's fun because people from all walks of life come there and it's always great to make new friends. I'm sure you know Konstantin from inside Russia. He's got a large family. Recently, his children from the US came to visit him. Meet Jake and Sky. Um, hi, I'm Sky. I'm from America in Maine. I came here about five days ago to Tashkent in Uzbekistan. Um, it's been an experience so far coming, traveling 12 hour plane ride um, straight here and we get off and couldn't understand anybody, but we got off and um, walked around and it's definitely a different experience than being in America so far. Totally different. My name's Jake. This is my sister, Sky. <laughs> I flew here with her. We're here meeting our pops right over there. Um, Uzbekistan is an awesome place. Everyone's super nice. The food is super good. The weather is beautiful right now. Just first impression is great. No one speaks our language, but we're getting around that pretty well. Sky, I know you've noticed some cultural differences. You want to tell me about that? Yeah, it's definitely interesting because I'm like, I think Americans are huggers and, you know, <laughs> touchy. touchy, like they're always just like, hey, how's it going? But I think it's like considered rude to shake the women's hands here. And I was just like, I thought it was rude. They wouldn't shake my hand. I'm like, <laughs> they don't like me. You this is funny stories so far. Funny stories. Um, the, got... the rug story. Oh, Sky's been talking about getting rug here for as long and... Uh, my dad goes to the bazaar, never sees rugs, never sees rugs, and then the day Sky shows up, they're selling rugs. The bazaar is super cool too, just seeing how they like buy groceries. It's kind of like our supermarket, kind of seeing how they buy groceries is awesome. Yeah, and the funny thing is, um, we actually were researching Tashkent before we came here, and then we saw Slava on there, <laughs> and I was like, I showed um, our pops, we were just like, oh, <laughs> Look at this video. And he's like, I know him. That's my friend Slava. <laughs> okay, so what's your plan for the, for the rest of the week? Um, my brother 
It's coming today, right? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. My brother is coming tomorrow. We're gonna go try plov. Spend time with family. My babushka just came. Yes, that's right. My babushka just came. We're gonna hang out with her. Do our best to understand her. <laughs> We're gonna go buy some rugs. Oh <laughs> yeah. From the bazaar, the big bazaar. And I wanna go over and take more pictures. And um, try and get as many stories as we can to tell Americans to try and come out and visit these different places because it's a See whole new, new things, experience experiences. coming out to like the different countries and you know you have to come and do it firsthand. <laughs> Sky, what'd you order? Um, a spinach and tomato omelet with bread on the side. All right. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to do that? Um, it looks kind of American. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. And then you asked for what? <laughs> and then a Tabasco. That's right. <laughs> I need my hot sauce. <laughs> Local money makes you feel rich. See, this bank notice, 200000 You think it's a lot, but it's only, it's less than $20, like $19. But wait till you see this one. Ilya, give me, yeah, it's from Zimbabwe. This is $50 billion. It's $50 billion. You're talking to a billionaire right now. That's a trillion. Is that trillion? That's a trillion. That's $50 trillion, guys. <laughs> I'm so rich. I'm putting gloves on to eat a sandwich. Right. Never done that in America ever. <laughs> Super you don't different. do it in America. No, no one does. <laughs> Let's get dirty, man. <laughs> Let's do it. I recently started taking tennis classes with a coach. $17 for an hour, I think is a great deal. Before that, I only played tennis two times. But I've played badminton and table tennis before, and they're in many ways similar. So I think I already had some skills. I don't know if you remember this guy from my video from Brighton Beach, New York City, which I was filming in 2021. So the other day he surprised me with a message on Instagram. Oh, dude, you're in Tashkent. I'm also in Tashkent, let's meet. Wow, I was flabbergasted. And here we are, two years later. We went to a Turkish restaurant in a nice part of town known as Tashkent City. So you just, you pick whatever you like. Yes. The uh, It's a dry ice. Dry ice, okay. Is it dangerous? Now, let's talk to Donny R, or just Donny. What's up, man? Welcome, welcome to Tashkent now. Yeah, good to see you in Tashkent. See you, absolutely. Very you happy know. to see you here. They say small world. Absolutely. So, how often do you come to Tashkent? Oh, you know what? Uh, lately, I'm traveling a bit more than I used to. So, probably like every six months, I'm here, visiting family, checking my friends. What brought you to America in the first place? You know what? Uh, it was very interesting, like everyone knows about American dream, uh, how the, it's a great country and at some point I had opportunity to uh, apply for the lottery, which was like really successful for me. Green and card lottery. Absolutely. And then uh, <laughs> I got this card. So since then I'm in the US and I'm a happy guy now. Congrats, man. Congrats. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. And what line of work uh, are you in in New York? So, in previous our uh, meeting, we had, I used to do like, I had a shop in a grocery store in, uh, in Brighton Beach, if you remember. We used to do like uh, bakery stuff, some food, uh, food cooking and selling in Brighton Beach, like local food, uh, Uzbeki food, basically. And then, uh, I wasn't really successful with this business, it was hard, but I got like really good uh, experience over there. And at the same time, I had my small trucking business. So uh, I'm still in that business now and uh, we're doing okay. And how do you see your future? Do you see yourself living in Uzbekistan or in America? Oh, you know what? I never decided yet because both these countries are my loved countries, I love US, I love my home country, Uzbekistan. It's, uh, they are different, but at the same time, they are very uh, close to me. And from one side, 
my good friends, my life, my business in U.S. From other hand, my family, my relatives, my old friends, all of them here. I know you bought an apartment here in Tashkent. Yeah. Congrats. Thanks. So, uh, is it a good time to invest in Tashkent? I believe so, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> lately it's getting expensive here. I, I, I assume because the population is growing, so everyone needs the real estate. Um, so people need a living, uh, like housing. So what they do is, like uh, there are a lot of construction companies who are building a lot of houses, apartments. So like, and price is growing. Like you buy today something for 100K and then in a couple of years, it's gonna be more, so. What can you expect to get for 100K in Tashkent? Oh, you know what? For 100K, as of today, I think you could get like three bedroom apartment in good location with good view. Uh, three bedroom apartment, yeah. That's not a bad deal. That's not. This Turkish restaurant was brand new, spacious, and very impressive. Hey, Donnie. Hey. You wanna tell me where we are? So we are in the city center now. This is a newest built uh, Tashkent city. So we have here newly built, all these apartment buildings right. are uh, probably built in 2020, if I'm not mistaken. So it's brand new. Yeah, definitely. On this side, they have a big garden now. So at the back of here, you can see they built uh, high floor buildings. Right. So the one is which is behind the Hilton Hotel is the tallest one in Tashkent today. I believe it's 53 floor building. Wow. The cost starts, I, I assume, from $2,000 for square meter. Wow. Up to six or $10,000. Are you serious? Yeah, like probably the highest uh floors are very expensive that's like dubai prices yeah maybe even <laughs> higher yeah but this probably. is like a number is one the, is that the fanciest building in town yeah exactly oh, wow. it's number one building it's tallest building which they built recently on the like uh, latest technology where they are sure that it's gonna stay for any type of earthquake and they probably invest a lot of money on it that's why it's expensive and you can see the whole city from the top, I believe. Who's buying these apartments? Is it locals? Is it foreigners? Is it Uzbeks living abroad? Let's say 50% is uh, the, the locals who are living outside of the country. Okay. It's kind of investment. So foreign money. Yeah, exactly. And then probably 10, 15% is foreigners. And then the rest probably locals. Okay, the rich locals. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. A мне, короче, рассказывали, что про турка Uh -huh. Какого-то богатого, он что-то 50 квартир купил на стадии котлована. О, oh, здесь же? А где-то здесь, да. Uh -huh. Let's say the apartment would cost at the early stage, uh, let's say $500 per square meter. Once it's finished, it's definitely going to go up to $1,500. Yeah. Just kind of, you know, it's, and it's going to take probably two years. And in two years, you can make, what, 25, 30K? Just invest in yeah. the money. You don't do anything, basically. It's better than stocks. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. What's your uh, like impression of how the city is developing? Uh, it's going to be growing definitely more. They're going to build a lot of more buildings for sure. And uh, once they're going to improve the infrastructure, like the roads and some other other stuff, then definitely it's going to be great. Nice place. I love it. I got me some tea with honey. Come on, come on, come on. Donnie, I gotta be honest with you. You did a you did a hell of a job promoting this uh, port of town. Now sure. I'm interested. If I could afford uh, an apartment here, what are the prices? For the same three bedroom apartment, probably you're gonna spend at least 150k to 200 thousand dollars i still think it's good a good investment over here you but think so yeah like yeah. in the long run definitely be, yeah yeah you're driving in new york too yeah definitely yeah so what's the difference it's a smaller city comparing to new york so the traffic is less uh, people here are more jumpy like uh, uh, 
That they, was my impression too. Yeah, like switching lanes yeah, yeah, all yeah. of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the very quickly they yes. can and uh, they, and everyone uh, get got used to that because it's kind of regular stuff here. Okay. Uh, in New York, it's like you won't do that. You cannot cut off someone. Right. Stay in your lane. Right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. People are more patient probably in New York. You can tell there's lots of Malibus here. Mostly Chevrolet. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we got one Tesla over there. That's a rich guy. Yeah. <laughs> Tashkent is changing, and changing for the better. There's a construction boom going on, and also I see more and more electric cars on the streets. There's a reason for that. Uzbekistan has decided to exempt electric cars and hybrid cars from customs duty until 2030. When it comes to food, after a few months you get tired of eating Uzbek food every day because it's heavy on meat and relies primarily on the fatty sheep. So I like to go to places that serve European food. I like to get something like a Greek salad or a pasta. But once in a while, who can say no to a bowl of plov or a delicious samsa, right? I love the concept of bazaars or outdoor grocery markets. You can be walking through the city and then you see a bazaar and you think, well, let's see what they have. You can always find something delicious for a good price. I normally get some fruit, some dried fruit and nuts, and a pomegranate juice. So this is what I bought, some apples, some walnuts, and some fresh pomegranate juice. All of this came to about $8. I think it's a pretty good deal. And now, time to work. I gotta work on my video about a mine. Now let's talk about some things that I don't like in Tushkent. Number one, garbage bags on the side of the road. I don't know if that's all over the city, but at least in my neighborhood it's a thing. And then these bags sit in the street until a garbage truck comes and picks them up. And it looks kind of ugly, you know, seriously. Second, Tushkent has an air pollution problem. In the spring it's fine, because we get rains occasionally, but in the summer and winter it's bad. Third, there's a huge income gap between expats and locals, because local salaries are very low. A taxi driver on the average makes around $400 and the security guard, I was told, makes only $250 a month. One taxi driver told me that he doesn't really care about the new ski resort they opened because he can't afford it anyway, and also all European restaurants that we go to are too expensive for him. That's kind of sad. And now, let's talk about freedom of speech in Uzbekistan. Uh, and we're done. On a serious note though, a famous Russian stand-up comedian, Danilo Popurechny, recently did a show in Tashkent and his performance was 2.5 hours and they muted 50 minutes of his performance. So every time he was going to talk about Ukraine and Russia, um, they would mute his microphone. So I like that most Uzbek people are kind and polite. There is a small grocery store next to my hotel and this clerk is very polite and mastered the art of small talk and I like his positive attitude. In fact, I buy Iran. Iran, it's a milk and milk. I like it. And this is our favorite seller. Very positive man. Very nice 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 man. They were celebrating the coming of Navruz. Navruz is one of the most treasured holidays in Uzbekistan. Sometimes it's known as Persian New Year. Navruz is a chance to welcome a new year and to enjoy great food with friends, neighbors and family. People perform traditional dances, exchange gifts and organize folk festivals. The main food of Navruz is sumulak. It is made from germinated wheat that has to be cooked all night. I got a chance to participate in the preparation of sumulak and stir the bowl and while you stir in the bowl, you're supposed to make a wish. So, let's sum things up. Do I enjoy staying in Uzbekistan? I sure do. How much do I spend in Tashkent? Let's see, my hotel comes to $720 a month, my tennis lessons come to $200 a month, food comes to around $540 a month, it's a lot because I don't cook and I have to eat out. And taxi rides come to about $50 a month. So the total comes to around $1,500 a month. Well, what do you guys think? Would you live in a place like Tushkent? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video.
Also, check out my recent video from Oman. Thank you. It's 2 a.m. and I can't fall asleep Cause I'm not tired I'm thinking about the days we used to shine When we were young I told you that we should start a band And reach for the sky